Great. Welcome to today's meeting for the Cloud Native SIG. Um, we have Gareth and we have today with us talking about the Tecton Planet plugin. Yeah, so from, um, I'll, I'll introduce myself, I'm Gareth Evans. I've come from the Jenkins X project where we used uh, Tecton quite a lot. We we're sort of heavily, heavily, heavy, heavy users of Tecton really. Um, and recently moved over to uh, Jenkins community, uh, mainly focusing on sort of infrastructural stuff at the moment. But one of my sort of yeah, areas of interest is the Tecton stuff. And I would love to know um, how that's going. Uh, is it still in sort of active development or is it sort of, is it kind of done its proof of concept and then it's paused or are you looking for contributors and uh, where you see it going really? So, uh, so even I'll introduce myself before we start rambling on Tecton client plugin. So, uh, so I work for Red Hat and uh, I work as I work as a maintainer for some OpenShift plugins and as uh, like the Jenkins that we use on OpenShift. So we package Jenkins for OpenShift and we uh, do some pre-scripts. So we be, I maintain that. Along with that, I also work on the Jenkins automation operator. So we basically uh, were working on the Kubernetes operator under the Jenkins CIO, and then we fork from them because. Uh, the development was a little too slow for us. So we forked from them into the Jenkins automation operator and uh, we are working on that now. And uh, as a side thing, so that is that is the stuff I'm doing for Red Hat. As a side project, uh, Tecton Client Plugin, uh, I started as, as a side project to better understand the plugins themselves and how to write one because at the end of the day, I have to understand plugins better. And the plugins that I have in Red Hat, I've inherited them. I didn't write them myself. So it came about as that. So uh, one thing that I wrote Tecton client plugin was also for, so that Jenkins users can basically start using Tecton and they can uh, easily just, you know, go through, they wouldn't have to fiddle with the YAML. They, they are, uh, Jenkins users are okay with using the Jenkins UI and they would rather do that, right? So they would rather just like go to the Jenkins UI, do some stuff on the Jenkins UI and just, say like build and that's what they're used to. So they, they should be able to do that uh, on Jenkins. So that was the initial idea. And uh, it is it is in development, active development, but it is also something that I do on the side. So uh, I, I am, yeah, it would be nice to have contributors. Uh, it would be faster and uh, where I see the plugin going is, I want to. I wanted to uh, be able to support all Tecton API, and that also means that uh, there needs to be some kind of contribution. So the thing is, uh, in in the Tecton client plugin, we use the uh, Tecton extension for Kubernetes client. So the Tecton extension for Kubernetes client doesn't uh, support uh, doesn't support all APIs. But uh, what would what would happen? Is that while we are working on Tecton and trying to support all APIs, we would have to also start uh, contribute a little bit to the Kubernetes client, like uh, as time goes. So uh, you know we have all the APIs supported in Jenkins, and uh, uh, as time goes on, it would be nice to have uh, till event listener support. And uh, once once that happens, and uh, if the cloud uh, cloud events plugin works out. This is all like, like in the future, like this is what, what I was just uh, thinking about. So if the cloud events plugin works out, the, the Tecton client plugin could do a lot of stuff through the cloud events plugin. Uh, like, uh, so there would be like a hard depending dependency on the cloud events plugin at that point, but then uh, that's what the cloud events plugin like I'm ideating the cloud events plugin for because once the cloud events plugin is done, uh, Jenkins can support cloud events and uh, work with them. And there is a proper methodology for it. Uh, I think the Tecton client can like leverage it then and then also uh, work with Tecton more easily. And uh, once that is done, again, I'm just like thinking out loud, not uh, like this is just ideated kind of before, but 
once that is done it would be nice to see in the jenkins file we should be able to uh, you know uh, have a dsl for it and uh, once it's in the jenkins file uh, i i see that that would be like a good plateau to reach uh, because then uh, then once it reaches that plateau then a lot of people can actually start incorporating it more into their work jenkins workflows uh, so yeah that that is basically it that is basically all i thought about it yeah it's nice to see uh, some interest towards it thank you for forking it i was like who who forked it there's one more person who forked the project wait who is it oh it's garrett oh i'm meeting him today i thought i'd heard it's nice meeting you garrett okay nice to meet you too no i i, I was just um i mean i was looking at it from a uh, i suppose it's like a build density point of view so we, we want to build on top of Kubernetes where we've got lots of jobs going, certainly for ci.jenkins.io, um, for all of the plugins. One of the kind of issues that we have in converting that to Kubernetes is that for every agent that we spin up, we also end up spinning up a JNL, JNLP, JNLP yeah, container with a JVM on, um, and that takes a considerable amount of memory and CPU costs and for the sort of 1500 plugins that we're building with that's that, that can be quite a, quite a lot um so we're looking at a way of sort of running those builds with you know in a, in a lighter way um if possible um and one of the things we found on the jenkins x project was that as soon as we switched to tecton um we got amazing build density straight out of the box um just because the builds are so quick they're so lightweight um, we could do all those things. Um, so, so something like that would be, uh, that's kind of where I'm coming from really. Mm. Uh, possibly the UI, um, the ability to create or update a job from the UI isn't so much of an issue. Um, I don't think that would be something that we would probably look at. I'm, I'm not sure how we would do it yet, but I think using something like being, or how giving the ability to use like Tekton and Tekton Catalog, um, those those sort of resources, um, sort of as, as reusable components inside yeah. Jenkins and be able to view the log and handle correctly if the pipeline fails, that mm -hmm. that kind of stuff will be great. I've done a few prototypes using like the TKN client to trigger a job and handle, and I'm basically just doing a you know kubectl apply inside a pipeline but then i still have the overhead of trying to um i need to spin up an agent first to be able to do that and that's problematic or i take over an executor on the on the controller and that's what i'm kind of trying to avoid um yeah i mean one of the approaches we took on jenkins x was to have it's not actually jenkins x that triggers the job it's a component called lighthouse hmm. um and that uses a dot lighthouse folder where you can actually put your pipelines and resources and everything you need inside there. And they're kind of lightly manipulated and then applied mm -hmm. so that you have full control. I was wondering whether that would be something we could look at to, um, you know, have a doc tecton folder or something like that inside your repo and it would be able to handle yeah, those or, or at least create a job based on that, a quick prep, uh, sorry, a pipeline or pipeline run, um, whatever else. There is a, uh, pro there's a project uh, which is going on called a Tecton Config, Tecton is code, or like Tecton Config is code, which uh, does something similar. Uh, yep. I don't know if you've heard of it. it uh, I've uh, seen it on the, I've seen it on the Tecton working group. Yeah, I've seen it mentioned. Yeah. But, I don't know it, much about it. Similar, like uh, the you put a dot tecton folder in the uh, root of your Git, uh, and then it basically picks up everything up from there. So I'm not very sure like how it does it, uh, but it's supposed to be uh, similar to like you know having a Travis dot Travis folder or like or file. Like it's supposed to be similar, like uh, similar to that. Okay. I'm actually not very well versed with uh, Jenkins X apart from the fact that it uses Tecton uh, and it's uh, like an amalgamation of different components like which uh, work together. Um, 
yeah but but uh, i understand uh, from what i understood uh, you you try to run uh, jenkins jobs through tekton and you would you would have to sometimes uh, spin up agents by yourself that that's what you're avoiding to do and yeah so the i suppose the initial kind of prototypes that i came up with just they used the um like the tekton cli the, 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 the tkn um mm -hmm. client really and the way that that seems to work is it if i put that if i put the control of that into a pipeline then i end up with a uh an agent being spawned i suppose Which you may be able to run it out directly from the master but yeah when you say controller what do you mean uh sorry the the master jenkins master yeah okay Okay. So, uh, so how you? Uh, so, are you? Uh, let me let me go back to another question. Uh, maybe which was repeated. Uh, so, Kara asked a question about if we can run these, uh, uh, run the client without a JNLP, uh, like an environment which doesn't need a JNLP connection. so this is something you want to achieve right ideally yeah and i mean uh, that i mean that kind of that thing that can i suppose that's that would be like an optimization really it doesn't i suppose what i would i'd like to be able to spin off create or manipulate or spin off a, a tekton you know a tekton pipeline um yeah The, the, uh and and at least monitor it for for failures i'd like understand whether or not it fail passes and fails and um the the kind of like ending up status you know it affects the jenkins job so if it, it you know and i suppose view the logs of that pipeline as i would through the ui that's kind of where i'm thinking that would be like kind of like a first step okay and then as a uh, currently the sorry sorry for breaking but currently uh, the the logs are supported like i i don't know so last few times i prototyped it and checked it uh, for like for cdcon and a little bit after the the log streaming worked well uh, log streaming works well for task runs i'm not sure about pipeline runs right now uh, I, i need to check it's just been like a lot of time since i've worked last time i worked with uh, the plugin was last week and that was when i was reviewing it with one of my juniors and uh, we were trying to figure out like what we need to work on next so it's actually a lot of clean up first we'll have to do and then after that it will be uh, most up but yeah it it is possible to uh, so what i did was i basically just copied uh, the logic that was there in the tekton cli code of how they stream the logs and i just like replicated that in java and like and and it's 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 very possible to do it and uh, of like what would be nice to have is as you said uh, would be the catalog support so catalog support uh, i planned it for uh, v1 uh, right now let me just share like a tentative v1 so let me just share uh, you have the link so link to the road you do you have the link to the road map by any chance i think i've seen that on the github repo yeah, yeah. so for the for the tentative v1 like catalog support is like uh, is supposed to be there and i hope to start working properly on it uh, by the end of uh, like at least by the end of this month so um there's there's a, there's a lot of stuff and uh, it, like help would be appreciated like from wherever i could get um uh, i am uh, trying to see if this can uh, i i don't know if it's possible uh, 
maybe this can become a, a GSOC project. Maybe that would help uh, because uh, just because I actually have a lot of other responsibilities and this was kind of like a side project I worked on. And I would actually just love to go ahead with this because uh, we are kind of going to plateau soon with uh, some of the features that we have for Jenkins automation operator. And I'll, 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 I'll get time then to like work on Tekton and uh, all, all of this other stuff. So I also contribute to Tekton from time to time, uh, especially to pipeline. And uh, currently I'm working on a debug feature for it. So I, I, I really want to be able to work closely with Tekton as much as possible. So it would be nice to have uh, someone who can uh, contribute as well. Are you planning on contributing by any chance? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> so uh, it was, uh, I remember like, so I had, I had the prototypes ready for a bit, but uh, I applied the talk for CDCon like in the last hour. I was thinking, should I or should I not? But uh, I'm glad I did. And it was uh, like it came through. And uh, I, I really want to see this uh, project go forward. So uh, where do you see uh, and how do you see this being used like uh, in the hands of users? And uh, is it, so you said you work like uh, primarily on Jenkins X, right? I, so I, I was I was working on Jenkins X up until um, probably about midway through, no, maybe like September, I think it was. Um, yeah, I was primarily focused on Jenkins X. Um, but working on like um, SaaS style components for Jenkins X really, and that's where we were focusing on. Um, and then since then, we have been, or I've been, I joined the Jenkins community team. So I've been looking at uh, Jenkins sort of infrastructure. So the main, um, the, the instances of Jenkins that host um, or build all of the plugins, do what we do releases from. So it's, it's more of the community side and it's all, it's all Jenkins rather than Jenkins X. But what I'd quite like to see is to see, to bring it over some of the learnings from Jenkins X in, back into Jenkins. So certainly around um, the usage of Tekton and uh, like, yeah, better ways of scheduling builds and pipelines on top of Kubernetes. That's where I think it all, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's actually, that's actually very nice to hear because uh, you like, uh, I, I don't have much uh, Jenkins experience as such, but uh, like we, if, if we are able to work together and uh, work on something that will actually make Jenkins support uh, Tekton and uh, maybe anything that supports cloud events, I'm, I'm just like looking forward to that really. Cool. Yeah. And what, I think there would also be other people in the community interested in doing this. Um, I, I, I know that I've spoken to like a few X Club, these employees that are doing um, or running into the same sort of thing, problems. Um, uh, and they, they really want to know how to get much better build density on top of Kubernetes and, and using things like Tekton. And can they sort of hook it all together? So. Yeah. Maybe I'll to rope other people in. Yeah, that should be good. The thing with uh, Jenkins is, uh, I'm going to be extremely blunt here. People don't like the fact that it's a monolith, and uh, it's really uh, they they don't like the fact that. And it's not about even liking the performance issues are there, and we have a lot of peeps in Jenkins uh, in uh, OpenShift who who like just uh don't like it that's why like we are kind of moving to tekton in the first place as a as our primary say cd but the thing is the matter the fact of the matter is we can't just force people and that's i i feel like we can't just force people to move to like a new tool you gotta give them some kind of you know 
tool to actually move and like some kind of like don't don't give the uh, farmer fish teach them fishing right like yeah. i feel like you sh- you can do that with like some some integration like this so i, I really i really feel uh, it's it's possible to do it with some kind of plugin integration or something so uh, so I, I i look forward to this are you uh, so have you have you run run the uh, plugin before uh, and are, are there any kind of issues you 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 see no i mean i i i was trying to find out if there was an actual release like a proper release of it yet um like is it is it do you know if it's downloadable um, um. It's it's downloadable from the uh, experimental channel. Okay, that's what I need to do. So there there hasn't been an actual release for it, um, but it's uh, so if you go into the uh, releases, you can yeah. see that uh, you can pick up the zip from there. All right, so then. So this is the Tekton client plugin that's available on the experimental channel. Okay. Um, two things, starting with the more important one. <laughs> uh, for for moving this forward at a, a community level, I think it would, you know, Vivek, you mentioned having this as a GSOC project. I think this actually would be a fantastic GSOC project. And um, would either of you like to to do a draft proposal and submit it on the mailing list for GSOC? I know you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then we can get some feedback on it, and and put it up as a draft proposal on the website, which would be great. I think there will be a huge amount of interest from students. I think this will be a very popular topic, so it's nice. And and I think it's great uh, for Jenkins and for the community. So that's very good. Um, my other question is more for, for me. <laughs> so um, when we talked about build density, Vivek, you mentioned uh, Jenkins File Runner. How, how do you want to speak more on that? Because I think I have some questions about how these things relate. Jenkins File Runner? Yeah, you, I, I said we, we were looking for... Um, well, I guess I didn't say build density so much. I said we wanted to spawn a pipeline without spinning up a JVM. And you, you had been saying, actually, Jenkins File Runner uh, likely does something similar or, or that. What? Um, so uh, I actually worked on the Jenkins File Runner. So I was just like very interested with the Jenkins File Runner because of the fact that you can run Jenkins files. Like Oleg is amazing to like, like me that I, I really like the Jenkins file runner. The fact that you can run Jenkins files in a serverless fashion just has a like uh, Jenkins X uses Tekton. It really doesn't run Jenkins files as such. But Jenkins file runner actually runs Jenkins files in a serverless fashion. So uh, initially I had thought that uh, Jenkins X was uh, w- was doing something like that when I uh, when, when I just heard its name. But later on I figured out that it's basically running Python, but Jenkins. Uh, so the so with Jenkins File Runner, if you can just give Jenkins files and the required resources uh, in a fashion which is replicable, uh, and like the, I, I was thinking, if this is possible, then uh, people can just use uh, use this methodology to run their Jenkins files in a serverless fashion. To do this, uh, I figured out. This sounds like a great idea for an operator because that's what operators do. The operators are used to like replicate, uh, like replicate these kind of, you know, uh, processes. And uh, the so what the operator does is it it basically helps the user. So it's even that is like in a POC phase. Uh, it's not in the Jenkins CI org also. It's basically just POC, but. Uh, it's basically just supposed to uh, allow uh, help users build their own Jenkins file runner image, uh, and that image will contain all the plugins that they require, and then they can use uh, this image against any Jenkins files uh, file they want. 
which requires these plugins. So it's it's a portable image uh, which they will be keep using for the same Jenkins files uh, they want would want to run in production. And uh, uh, there are there are a few things missing like uh, you know the the ability to add uh, R back. Uh, to the Jenkins file runner pod. So once that RBAC is given, the the the, the operator uh, the pod can actually spin up other pods and stuff. Because uh, when you are running Kubernetes client, uh, the Kubernetes client require in in the Kubernetes client plugin, that plugin requires you to uh, give certain permissions to the pod. Uh, so uh, we did we did a POC on this. So my teammate Akram, he had actually uh, worked on the Jenkins file runner uh, to do a POC on OpenShift, and he basically uh, ideated that. And I uh, built on top of whatever like Oleg and Akram did. So I I turned that entire idea into an operator. So uh, this is also possible and. Uh, it's, it it would be it. This is something that would uh, also help users kind of just run their Jenkins files in Kubernetes. I I don't know how this uh, correlates to build density because I'm not sure what you exactly mean by build density as well. So if you could like help me out with that. So I suppose the build density is just is referring to like that the number of the number of builds that you can process per um, yeah available CPU and memory. So on Kubernetes, if if we say we're on GCP and we're running with um, you know a number of standard sized nodes or something like that, how many builds can that actually process? Um, one of the issues that we had on Jenkins X when we used Jenkins File Runner originally was that because it requires a JVM to do the initial launching, mm -hmm. you're, if you're doing a Maven build, you're actually launching double, you're, you're launching two um, virtual machines to be able to do that, um, or two JVMs anyway, to be able to, to do that. Um, rather than with Tekton, you're just launching the single one. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that we 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 had to run with pretty much double the number of nodes to process the same amount of builds using Jenkins and Jenkins File Runner. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Jenkins File Runner is uh, it does take a long. The images do take a long time to build actually uh, for the Jenkins File because they are quite heavy and uh, like Tekton even the Code Tekton doesn't take that much time to even get deployed, but the Jenkins file runner is like performance heavy. Uh, I feel that way the build density that you could achieve a Tekton client plugin, uh, I, even right now, would be much higher than actually just running jobs because at the end of the day, it is using Tekton. And uh, if you consider Tekton client plugin as the uh, main engine for your jobs, uh, in, through Jenkins, it, it would uh, not engine, engine is the wrong word, but the interface for your like Tekton jobs through Jenkins, uh, it, 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 it could be, you could achieve a higher build density then. The, the, uh, this, the, there needs to be like, the, these are not real numbers. Like I'm just, I'm just thinking like it would definitely be much better because the Jenkins file runner is, is quite heavy that way. But uh, in case like where customers like who don't want to move from uh, like tech, like Jenkins in in the in that scenario, I think it will be nice for them to suggest the Jenkins file runner. But it's it's definitely I'd say it's definitely better to uh, migrate like migrate to Tekton. So currently I'm working with a guy, uh, like he, he's kind of a, he's, I've known him for a long time and they run Jenkins in their uh, like environment and he, he's looking at uh, moving to Tekton 
so he's he's taking my help to like understand how the kubernetes like kubernetes side of things works and uh he, he, they're just saying that it just takes a lot of performance they just need to keep uh, uh like upgrading their aws instances add more storage so uh it is something that he like he he's thinking of that way but i i feel uh like you can achieve like high build density through testing so yeah thanks that was a very good explanation for me <laughs> <laughs> thank you so um so uh, my only thing is like i it should be like what would be nice is uh, when like when once we reach the dsl stage in uh, tecton uh, client plugin at that point i feel uh, users would be extremely comfortable to start using it because they they i i feel a lot of them maybe don't care about uh, uh, you know some 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 of them might not even care about the ui but a lot of them might care about the you know jenkins file itself like and put, doing everything through the jenkins file so it it could be something uh, to look forward to after the catalog feature so that that would be nice in terms of what prioritizing work you mentioned that cloud events would facilitate a lot of the tecton plugin work and would be like the tecton plugin would have a hard dependency on the cloud events plugin is that is that still the the development like basically overall roadmap you're looking at for this that's so what you're thinking so, yeah. so the cloud events part will come much later on when would come uh, later okay so if you know much later on like when you would want to kind of create a link between the tecton cloud events and the uh, you know jenkins jenkins cloud events like if you if you want to do something like that where if the uh, like you're listening on like a tecton cloud event and hoping that once the you know task exits you want to do something in a jenkins job which probably you couldn't do through tecton because tecton doesn't support it or doesn't do something so cloud events would help in that in that case okay so in creating the sync for it so the and it's it's hard dependency dependency but only later on like you you would uh, tecton might use uh, some of the plugins capabilities to create uh, for like event listeners and stuff so to create an event listener maybe like create a sync like i still need to like dive deep into the cloud event stuff uh, i uh, i have tried a bit but uh, i still need to read up a lot more about it so there's a lot of study that i even i still need to do so I think I put a link um, on your draft proposal for the cloud events plugin to uh, a work stream group with the Continuous Delivery Foundation. It's under the interoperability SIG. Actually, it's going to become its own SIG probably next week. <laughs> um, but oh, yeah. that might, yeah, that might be an interesting um, meeting or SIG for you to go to. So, uh, work stream was part of interoperability, right? Yeah. But it's it's gotten a lot of movement and interest, and um, the idea is to make it its own take. So that's nice. <laughs> so I then, am, I'm actually so I guess Andrea Fritoli. I think yeah. he's part of uh, the work streams. Uh, the work stream. Uh, he uh, he architected the cloud events stuff in uh, Tecton and. Okay. I actually want to. Uh, I'm actually trying to study that the way he's done it in Tecton to understand how it could be maybe replicated for Jenkins mm -hmm. because uh, yeah.
for me it's just a, a learning thing i i am not that great with like cloud events like eventing in general but i'm i'm just trying to learn as well uh, as time goes so his model is, i feel is a, is a good place to start for in tech firm yeah i think so good <laughs> so uh i'm just so um should i mention this in the i, I didn't i don't i didn't actually get the uh, get so should i mention this doc to the uh, interoperability guys for the work streams guys which doc the the cloud events proposal doc yeah yeah plugin doc. i mean there's you know there's there's no reason why not to <laughs> okay cool that sounds good to me yeah okay i'll do that then you can certainly get, you know, it'd be, it'd, I'm sure it'll be a good discussion and you'll get feedback. So I wouldn't yeah. hesitate. I'm sure Andrea will ask me a lot of questions which I wouldn't be able to answer. <laughs> it's good. You can turn them around and ask him them back. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, Give me a moment. I'll come back in a minute and it'll be like three days later. <laughs> awesome. So we're at 45 past. Um, are there any other topics to discuss for this meeting? Oh, uh, not from my side. Nope, nothing from me. That was that was really good. Yeah, yeah, really good. I'm I'm so happy you two met and had this discussion. I think it's really fruitful. Um, thank you for the proposal on the cloud events uh, for GSOC. And if you would like to make another one um, for the client, the Tekton client, that would be. That would be great. Yeah, and we can. I'll I'll do that. I'll do that. Uh, let me see. I think I think I I should have it by the end of next weekend at least. Okay. So. Cool. Uh, we will look at moving this meeting two hours earlier, and I'll I'll just do it and announce it basically, or maybe ask and then. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thinking, uh, Maki, Maki, and Oleg are not here. It'd be nice to have them. Yeah, it would be really nice. Um, maybe maybe we can get Oleg and he's super busy right now. He's been pulled into so many different things, which is, but I know he likes to be involved in the community. So hopefully this is a meeting that will interest him. Do you think this, this is a good meeting to continue these discussions on cloud events, on Tekton, catalog integration, things like that? Yeah, I, I do agree with this. I, I feel, so I, I was, uh, so when I proposed the Tekton client plugin to Oleg, Mm -hmm. He uh, he suggested that the plugin be discussed in this meeting, okay. and uh, I think I think it's a uh, makes sense. Yeah, agreed. Okay, great. Thank you all. Very good meeting. Have a good uh, Friday <laughs> night, Vivad. Thank you for showing up, even though it's so late. Good seeing you, Gareth. Thank you, guys. Yes. Well, nice meeting you. Bye.